Bell's greatest albums ever. Little Richard. Hey. Tell presents the Les Cooper. Presents Soul Out of Sight. Cooper. Four time by Super King. William Devon. Don. Cannon. Carrie. You. Barry White. Yeah. 22 original. Your William Devon. Album of the Year. By Ronco. I'm Larry. And I'm Todd. And today we're celebrating the compilation albums that set the stage for our lives' musical journeys. From KTEL to Ronco to Warner Brothers products, these albums introduced us to a world of diverse music. And we'll dive into a little of the history, share some of your favorites, and reveal how they shaped Larry and I's eclectic tastes. If you stay tuned till the end, which you always should, Todd took the time to produce a modernized KTEL commercial with a new voiceover and a mashup of some of the old school commercials. Compilation albums were more than just collections of songs. These were introductions to new genres and artists. Yeah, and it all started, Lair, with KTEL and mm -hmm. Bronco and others joined in and the record companies, they loved it. And mm -hmm. we loved it because they packaged all these great songs into one accessible, affordable collection. Yeah. And KTEL, probably the most famous of these, founded in 1962 by Philip Kives, pioneered the as seen on TV marketing campaigns, making these an album a staple in households and on TVs. Kives, the K in KTEL, started by selling kitchen gadgets and nonstick pans, which back then were deadly poison. And do you remember the warnings, Lair? Uh, if you overheated those pans, it would kill your household birds. Oh, my God, the birds. I'm, I'm, I'm a little more worried about us. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe between 1976 and 1981, KTEL just alone sold more than 150 million of LPs in 34 countries? Yeah, you know, Lair, we both know they weren't necessarily good records. They were kind of cheaply made. Oh, yeah. um, songs faded out a little early. Uh, yeah. They would remove like entire verses or, uh, or worse yet, they would cut these tiny grooves, which, of course, means that they sounded really bad. You, you know you're in trouble when they you have the version of Freebird that's three minutes and 40 seconds long. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, um, for, for us, these albums were like a musical education. They exposed us to genres that we might never have explored if we didn't see these commercials. Yeah, that's right. Whether it was like rock or pop or soul, the yeah, compilation albums yeah. like this one yeah, had yeah. something for everyone. Albums like heavy metal with songs like Dire Maker and Starship Trooper. These were game changers for me as it got me out of listening to just pop and got me into listening to more, you know, in-depth and detailed deep rock cuts. Yeah. And, you know, Lair, for me, it was like KTEL's Blockbuster, which I actually have a copy of. Mm -hmm. uh, Edgar Winter, Frankenstein. That's how I was introduced to that. Love the song. And Sammy Johns, uh, that one-hit wonder, Chevy Van. And there was a movie. Sure. Absolutely I, horrible. Uh, these collections weren't just convenient, right, Todd? They were transformative. They changed what we listen to and what we wanted to listen to. So, Lair, we have a lot to cover here. But first, yep. a word from our sponsor. Uh-oh. Right. It's cost a lot of money. But what good is spending a lot of money? <laughs> don't sound good because of dust. You had one of these, Lair, didn't you? I did have one of these. <laughs> Vacuum by Ronco. Yikes. Did it ever work? Insert any size record. Uh, I think it actually dirtied the records more than it cleaned them, to be honest <laughs> with you. I think it scratched them. <laughs> it probably did. <laughs> oh, I, boy, do I ever surprise for you. <laughs> if you want the best possible sound from all your records, get the new record vacuumed by Ronco. In fact, buy two or three. They really. Yeah, why not? Buy two, two or three. three. <laughs> <laughs> One for the bathroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, look. You are out of control. Yeah. I actually have the record vacuum from Ron. Is that a real one, dude? That is the real one. Oh, my actually, God. It's, uh, it's in the original package, and the instructions are in here, too. Um, yes, it is a record vacuum from Ronco. They sell those things for like $400, $500 now, Todd. You can... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I doubt it. make out. Look at that. What a piece of crap that thing was. A little motor in there. some kind of vacuum deal. Yeah. Wow. It just sits on my shelf. It's uh, everyone should not have one. No, absolutely <laughs> not. So 
Um, why don't we highlight a couple of our favorite compilation albums and the tracks on those that changed our musical direction? Yeah, Larry. Todd? One of my all-time favorites is Ktel's I Believe in Music. <laughs> and for me, it was 1972 when that came out. It was my very first KTEL record, actually. And it kind of captured the essence of that, uh, that decade, you know, the early 70s. Yeah. Uh, I actually have a commercial. Let's cue up the commercial and take a look here, Larry. Yeah. KTEL presents another great new album, Believe in Music. Oh, yeah. The original hits, the original star, Daniel Boone. Oh, beautiful star. Why don't they play this on the radio anymore? <laughs> Some of it. I would listen for well, it. I would. Looking glass. Looking glass. Yeah, brandy. Yeah. Stewart, Slay, Dr. Hook, Raspberry, The Hollies, and more. Gallery. Argent. Oh, that's a good tune. I don't know about that one. No. He was a soap opera star, you know. I know he was. That's why he started, yeah. right? Yeah. Only three ninety nine. Three ninety nine, Lair. Cost more to buy that junky gay track. And and the vinyl was so cheap you could practically see through it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Actually, I have it right here. If you, they had, it came with a warning and said if you have your house above seventy degrees, you're going to melt the vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right you here. Had to, you had to store it in the fridge. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Actually, I, yeah, this one's actually in really good shape. Uh, I bought this. I just a couple of years ago, I found it and I said, well, this is in good shape. I figured I'd buy it. And then, you know, I throw it on on a Sunday morning and listen to all yeah. the old tunes. It takes me back. It's absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, what's funny is some songs, which were really pieces of crap, yeah. I could actually listen to now just because of the nostalgia. Like I was one of those guys walking around with death before disco T-shirts. Right. But. <laughs> As I've gotten older, I can listen to Donna Summer and appreciate she has a wonderful voice now and listen to MacArthur Park and things, you know. Long Cool Woman, The Hollies. Oh, right. great song. I love I it. I love that song. And, of course, uh, you, as you heard on the commercial, Hold Your Head Up, Argent. Love that one. And yeah. then, you know, the funny thing about these albums, Larry, is there was really no continuity. I mean, Slade right. Right. to Cher. <laughs> But that's it. Believe in music. My, I believe this is my, I, I know actually this is my first one. I think the other one was like music power or whatever, yeah. but look, we didn't have a lot of money as kids. Uh, yeah. Mom bought us the KTEL records. As you saw, they were three ninety nine, dollars which probably was in you know, like eight bucks today, but love it. Yeah. And that's probably the only compilation that did not have a Barry Manilow song on it in the seventies. <laughs> well, man, but it's not everywhere. the only compilation that didn't have a KC in the sunshine band. <laughs> right. Uh, so, Lair, what do you um? What is one of your favorite compilation albums? Yeah, so there were two of them that really made an impact on me. Freedom Rock, which had hey, some you know yeah, hippie well, music and a lot of other stuff on it. Um, but the one that really took me away from my comfort zone was heavy metal, and um, that was from the Warner Brothers Special Products. And some of the songs on it, I just want to mention because they they just it's the first time I heard a lot of these bands, Iron Man by Black Sabbath. And, it and a lot of these songs remain my favorite song by that artist. I think sometimes because it's the first time I heard uh, Freedom by Jimi Hendrix, Must Be Love by the James Gang. And this is when the James Gang, Joe Walsh had already left the band. This is Tommy Bolin. And it's from the album uh, called Bang, which is funny. You know, the James Gang Bang. The James ah. Gang Bang and the cover of it shows <laughs> the beginning of what that night probably looked like. Uh, <laughs> Bang a Gong, Get It On by T-Rex. Give It To Me by the Jay Giles Band. Um, Cindy Incidentally by The Faces. Touch Me by The Doors. Ramblin' Man by the Allman Brothers Band. When I first heard that song, Ramblin' Man, that, that's the first time I was like, you don't have to have vocals to have a great song. The, the guitar was Dickie Betts playing guitar was like he was sick. The guitar was singing to you. Um, it was so good. Then they had uh, the Eagles, uh, a song, song called the Outlaw Man, which I, is probably my favorite song by the Eagles. Now, do you have that compilation album? See, I've got my first one. Do you have your do you have the compilation album there? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but oh. I did order it a few days ago. <laughs> How so about that? Just for nostalgia reasons, Todd, it's going to be in my collection within a few days. And mm -hmm. that album right there is... 
probably wraps up. We could probably both sit down together and just listen to that whole thing and, and really sure. enjoy it. Absolutely, for sure. I, I, I have no doubt. Um, listen, before we hear your modernized compilation commercial that you put together, yeah. why don't we wrap up with our segment, what are we listening to this week? Well, this week I am, hold on, let me grab it. Yep. I'm listening to The Cult, uh, the Sonic Temple album. Um, good one. Yeah, it is a good album. This actually mm -hmm. was produced by Bob Rock. Um, this was the 30-year anniversary, so they. this is on really super heavy vinyl. I mean, it's double records, super heavy vinyl. This uh, album, sonically, Sonic Temple, is exceptional. Um, and, you know, every song on there is basically a hit song. That whole first side of this album, I have the, uh, the OG copy as well for The Cult. Um, this, that whole entire uh, first side, I could listen to that over and over. It's just, uh, it's, it's a wonderful, um, wonderful uh, album. What are you listening to this week, Lair? So this is um, my favorite modern jazz group, uh, EST. And I know I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but the leader of this band, who unfortunately passed away in a scuba diving accident um, about 10 years ago, uh, his name is Ebsdorn Svensson, and he was the piano player and leader and the writer of the music. Uh, Dan Berglund on bass, Magnus Ostrom on drums. And this is a fantastic double album of them live in London. And it's recorded on uh, extra thick vinyl. Uh, it, you play it at 45 RPM uh, to get the best sonic quality from it. The sonic quality from everything that they release is fantastic. Um, EST is the only jazz band ever to be on the cover of an American jazz magazine, Jazz Is. You turned me on to that one, Lair. And uh, I've also listened to some EST. And I, and I got to tell you, it is really good. It's just a trio, yeah. right? And then, yeah. and is that yeah. album, is that uh, a later release? Or w when was that one? Uh, yeah, released? this like, was um, uh, later. Uh, this, was, uh, this was put out, this, this printing was in 2018. That's awesome. And yeah. uh, do, do you believe that they're on KTEL? <laughs> probably yeah. not the best of jazz <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> well anyway look that's Listen. it for today's show lair yeah. um yeah well, i hope everybody had a uh you, you jogged your memory and that uh, you took a cool trip down memory lane a lot of amazing compilation albums out there that i kind of swooped through uh those at the at the intro there and sure. they really did set the direction for the music that we listen to today listen Everybody, please don't forget to like us, subscribe to us, yeah. comment, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode that we do. Um, now, Todd, let's see your modernized compilation matchup commercial. I think you're going to like this one, Lair. Yeah. Do you miss the days when you could get all of your favorite songs in one slightly inconvenient package? Introducing Why Did We Buy This, the collection from Golden Image Music, featuring unforgettable hits like... <laughs> From the people who brought you Disco Inferno in your living room and funky polka classics. Hey, that's great. All I want to know is can I get that for Christmas? Just 27 easy payments of $19.99. Call now and we'll throw in this amazing thing. But wait, there's more. Order in the next 30 seconds and we'll double, double your order. That's right, two piles of music you'll probably never listen to. Problem is I don't have a credit card. Do you take cash on delivery CODs? So dust off that turntable because why did we buy this collection from Golden Image Music is here to clutter up your life with musical madness. I can't wait for that to show up. Just call 1-800-HOLD-SCHOOL or 1-800-OLD-MEN or 1-800-STUFF. Hey, we love this new album. And we're wondering why we bought it.